Calling car 24. Car 24. Go to 3800 River Street. Investigate an ice truck and a black sedan. Back of warehouse. That was known as Sunday driving. Pretty good shot, Bob. What do you mean, pretty good? It was perfect. Say, who is that guy that's always running himself down? That's Bob Neal, the fighter. Never heard of him. You will. How about a drink? A drink? I'm in training. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Quick in. Upstairs. Hello, fellas. Say, Bob. I just bet five bucks on you. Don't let me down. I haven't lost a fight yet, have I? Well, you better not lose this one. Think this bothers you? Better beat it over to the hideout. Come in. Stay there until you hear from me. We ran into some bad luck, Chief. Save your breath, I know all about it. Lefty just told me. Did him and the babe ditch the coppers? Yeah, and they had to ditch the stuff, too. We would get a break like this when the bank rolls low. Hey, boss. I think I know a swell setup for another Don't job. Don't try to think, fathead. We got to lay low till this blows over. Who is it? Me. Hello, Vic. Well, am I interrupting a conference or awake? How I hate comics. Okay, I'll scram. Just dropped in to collect Jet. We got a date. You want me for anything else, Vic? No, beat it. Now, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. The rest of you birds wait in the other room. You're fighting tomorrow night, aren't you? Yeah. That's swell. Look, kid. Want to do me a favor? Why, sure. You've done funny for me. That's all right. Now, you can prove your gratitude by losing the fight. You mean let that copper knock me out? That's the idea. Say in the fourth round. Oh, but Vic, I've always fought on the square. My pals are all betting on me. Sure, but your pals didn't stake you to your training, did they? No, you did. All right, now listen. I'm in a spot and I got to raise some dough quick and I can't afford to take any chances. I got the slap what's left of the bank rolling a sure thing, understand? How about it? Will you play ball? Well, it looks like I haven't got much choice. Thanks, kid. 
And don't worry, you'll get your cut. Remember, round four. You sure had me worried in the fourth, but you came through okay. Someday you're gonna be good. What do you mean, someday? Now listen, young, but don't get too cocky. You've got a lot to learn yet. Yes, teacher. Hi, boys. Well, Bob, you did it again. You got anything else lined up for me? Yeah, I'll put you on a week from Saturday night with young Swanson. Looks like a pretty good boy, too. He won't look so good when I get through with him. He hates himself. How's Morley? He's still out. They sent for the ambulance. You mean he's hurt? Well, it's a safe. He's not going to the hospital just for the ride. Oh, I wouldn't let it worry me, Bob. He'll be all right. Hey, 
Do you mind? What's the rush? I gotta get right over to the hospital. You may be there sooner than you expect. Vic wants to see you. Oh. He's plenty burned, I suppose. I tried to square you, but it was no use. Better not keep him waiting. Come on. You'll be all right in a few minutes. Some water, please. Boy, that must have been some battle. Someday that killer Neil is going to live up to his name. I take it that Bob is not a friend of yours. He certainly is not. I don't know him and I don't want to. He's nothing but a conceited bully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Hey, no. Here, 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 here. Take it easy. Here, take it easy. Take it. No, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. The fight's over. Here, drink this. You'll be all right. Come on now. Hello, Vic. I'm sorry about tonight. You're sorry? How do you think I feel? Honest, I meant to go through with it. That's the truth, Vic. He did try to take a nosedive in the fourth, but the bell saved him. Is this the place? That's where they used to hang out. Okay, boys. Stand by while I look around. Then he said something about it. I know it sounds phony, but that's the way it was. He's given it to you straight, boss. Morley was trying to get his goat all through the fight. Come on down, wait in the car. Uh, beat it. I suppose you know what this double cross of yours cost me. Spoke your pace. Now it's my turn. Lefty, Bay. You agreed to take a licking tonight. Well, you're going to get it. Double header, huh? Right. Is this the arena? Oh no. I wouldn't like to have my furniture scratched. So the boys will take you to a nice, quiet place where you won't be disturbed. You! you have here. They're just having a dance. Funny. No music. Well, it looks like you win, Vic.
Just a minute. Well, babe, you're just the guy that I'm looking for. You too, Lefty. Come on. You've had your nap out. You belong to this mob? Well, does it look like it? Oh, you never can tell. Well, if it ain't Vic Santel. Now I begin to see daylight. I knew those mugs didn't have brains enough to figure out that warehouse job by themselves. What's up? So you got him? Yes, and somebody the chief will be very glad to see. Take him down to the car. Hello, Neil. I thought this was the night of the big fight. I'll say it is. You know him? Sure, everybody does. That's Bob Neal, the champion of the neighborhood. You better come along and explain to the chief about this unofficial bout. Okay. I had a hat when I come in here. Hey, do you mind? Not at all. You know, we could use some boys like you on the force. I wouldn't be a cop if they gave me the city hall. I'm a fighter. Is that so? Jeff, what's wrong? I gotta keep undercover for a while. I just snatched a purse. I thought you'd graduated from that sort of stuff. Things have been so tough since Vic was sent up, I couldn't be choosy. Give me that. Take your coat off. Here, put these on. Tom, what's on your mind? How long has your sparring partner been here? Since right after lunch. He hasn't worked up much of a sweat. Well, he's anemic. Oh. What, no rabbits? Say, what is all this? Some little rat snatched an old lady's purse with her rent money in it. What are you looking at me for? I didn't do it. Honest. Maybe not. Too bad the old lady couldn't get a good look at the thief. You're always trying to pin something on me. Yes, and someday I'll be successful. If I were you, Bob, I'd be a little more particular about my friends. Too bad there weren't any blind beggars around. I'm sorry I didn't hand you over to them. Not so fast. I'm gonna return this to the old lady. Gee, Bob, I gotta eat. Eat on that.
Well, I'd better be going. So long. I'll see you later, Chip. Hello, Mrs. Neal. How do you do, young man? Why, Bob, it's nearly six o'clock and you aren't dressed yet. I will be in a jiffy, Mom. I don't know why you associate with such riffraff. Oh, Chip's all right. Tie this for me, will you, sweetheart? Do you think you'll ever grow up enough to be able to dress yourself? How are you, Commissioner? Howdy, Tom. But Commissioner Cullen's coming. Surely you can stay home just one night. Why should I stick around just to listen to that gabby old windbag? He may be the police commissioner, but he's just a stuffed shirt to me. Oh, hello. Bye, Mom. Bye. It's nice to see you again, Joe. And it's good to see you, Kate. You're looking well. I'm sorry I wasn't in the house. I just came out here to call Bob. That boy of yours has quite a gymnasium. Yes. That's all he thinks about, fighting. And you counted on his joining the force like his daddy. That's the reason I asked you to come here. I thought perhaps if you talked to him, it might help. I want to get him out of this environment and into a good, steady job. He didn't give me much chance to talk to him. However, Kate, you send him over to my office. Thank you, Joe. Now, stop playing with that and come to dinner. <laughs> you know, I used to be quite a boxer when I was a young fella. Oh, you too. Uh. Oh, here's where he's taught me. Down for the cow. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said you were good. <laughs> he wins. <clears throat> So Ma's been working on you, huh? Well, I'm not interested. Oh, very well. I don't make it a habit of begging young men to join the force. A lot of them consider it a privilege. Yeah, well, I don't. Why should I want to be a dumb copper? Probably end up like Dad with a bullet in my back. That's true. A police officer does have to face certain dangers. Say, don't get the idea that that's the reason I'm turning down the job. Oh, of course not. Believe me, a fighter has to take plenty of chances. You, you knocked out Morley last week, eh? I'd say I knocked him out. He didn't come to for an hour. Yeah, you think you're pretty good, don't you? Why, no. I know I am. We've got some more boys on the force that are mighty handy with their mitts. Yeah? Where do you keep them? I never saw a cop get a good fight. We've well, got one boy that could do more than muss up your hair. Well, I'd like to meet him. You would? Sure. Well, perhaps it could be a rain. Fine, any time you say. At the athletic club. Say, I believe there's an open date next Saturday. The fellow I was supposed to meet busted his hand. I'll check up on Davis. He's our champ. Yeah? Well, when I get through with your champ, you may not be able to recognize him. So long. Have Patrolman Davis get in touch with me immediately. Careful.
Well, Doc, he's in your hands. We'll take care of him. How was he, Doc? Would he be all right? Oh, yes, of course. He's coming around now. I was sure scared. Were you responsible for this? Yes, I was. May I have the honor of shaking your hand? You don't know how I've longed for this moment. Miss Prentice, spirits of ammonia, please. Now, stand back, please. You'd better clear out. He'll be all right. Let's go, boys. Hello, beautiful. Say, I've been... Drink this. Wanting to meet you for a long time. Don't talk. Miss Prentice, you can finish overhauling this wreck. I'd better get on back to the hospital. Yes, doctor. You know, babe, I'm, you're a pretty swell dish. Keep quiet, please. What's the matter? Don't you like to be called babe? No. Okay, Mary. I know your name, and lots more about you. Say, uh, how about a date? No, thank you. Oh, I mean after my high heels up, say, uh, in about a week. No. Say, listen, most girls are tickled to death to go out with me. Oh, isn't that nice? Then you won't be lonesome, will you? I just wanted to tell you that you put up a good scrap. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. My face is too sore. No, on the level. That right of yours has plenty of authority. How do you know? <laughs> well, all you need is a little more science. Right now, you're a bit wild. Yeah, I guess so. Say, where did you learn to use your mitts? Down at the headquarters, Jim. Their athletic instructor is the next heavyweight champ. And I work out with them every day. Say, listen. Can anybody on the force do that? Why, sure, that's what he's there for. We've got to keep fit for our work. Well, glad to see you. Good night. Yeah, me too. I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry, sir, but the commissioner's taking his afternoon nap. I shouldn't like to disturb him. Will you just run along and tell him that Bob Neal wants to see him? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. He left express orders that he wasn't at home to anyone. Now, look, Rollo, I came all the way uptown to see him, and I'm not going to let you talk me out of it. Where is he? Uh, but I tell you, he doesn't wish to be disturbed. Hey, what's all that racket about? Oh, please, sir. You may go, Harris. Yes, sir. How are you, Commissioner? Well, young man, just what is the idea of disturbing my Sunday rest? I want to join the force. I wonder if there's anything wrong with my hearing. No, you heard me all right. How about it? Well, surely, young fellow, you, you don't want to become a stuffed shirt. Well, I was all wet, Commissioner. That Davis is no stuffed shirt. He's a regular guy. Perhaps you think that affliction comes with middle age. I don't blame you for riding me. Probably I should have had somebody knock my ears back a long time ago. But honest, on the level. I do want to join the force. You know, it'll please Ma, too. Yes, I know. As a matter of fact, we have quite a waiting list. Your application might not come up for some time. Oh, I see. 
I was hoping I could get on right away. You know, we put our men through pretty stiff training. Well, I guess I could take it. All right. You come down to my office tomorrow, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Commissioner. I'm sorry to have busted in on you like this, but I wanted to get it settled. That's all right. I'll see you in the morning about nine. I'll be there. Young fella, you'd better put a piece of steak on that eye. You a copper? Don't make me laugh. Listen, fellas, this is on the level. Cullen got my name in ahead of the other applicants, so I start training right away. What's the idea, Bob? Are you through with the fight racket? Not on your life. Listen, I'll let you in on something. I joined up for just one reason, for the physical instruction I can get free. When I'm good enough to wail the living daylights out of that mug Davis, I'll probably resign. You know, it might be kind of handy at that, having a friend on the force. Someone who might be uh, dumb when the right time comes. Yeah, it might at that. I'd like to see Miss Prentice. She's busy at the moment. Oh, that's all right. I'll wait. The doctor will see you again next Wednesday. What can I do for you? How about a dance next Friday? I beg your pardon. Or would you rather go to the movies? I'd, uh, I'd have been around for that date sooner, but uh, <clears throat> I've been kind of busy. So I see. Say, wait a minute. How about it? How about what? That date. I told you before I wasn't interested. Oh, you told me you didn't care to go out with loafers. Well, uh, <clears throat> I have a job now. I uh, suppose you joined the force just to please me. No, but I thought it might help. Come on, give me a break. I haven't time for you. I'm on duty. Well, when do you go off duty? Never, as far as you're concerned. Hello, folks. Don't tell me there's anything wrong with you, Neil. Well, Miss Prentice seems to think so. Say, guy, you're beginning to haunt me. Cheer up. You're going to see a lot of me from now on. Come this way, Officer Davis. Certainly. Say, Miss Prentice, just a minute. What is it? How come you have time for him when you're on duty? He happens to be a patient. Hello, Bob. Say, you look swell. Hey. Hello, boys. <clears throat> Thought I'd drop in and let you know I'm the new cop in this neighborhood. Well, if it isn't Cop Neil in person. Hi, kid. Hello, Bob. Fancy that. Hometown boy makes good. <laughs> yeah. And from now on, things have got to be quiet around here. Get that? Why, well, I don't believe he trusts us. Listen, boys, I'm in a spot. The captain detailed me to this patrol because he figured I knew the ropes and would have a better line on things than a newcomer. So from now on, you fellas have got to lay off. This gets kind of monotonous, doesn't it? Calling car 14. Calling car 14. Go to 719 Harley Street. A hold up. Monotonous, huh?
There he is. What happened, Mr. Stevens? Hold that man. Hit me over the head and robbed the cash register. Did he get much money? I don't know how much was in Where'd he go? I don't know. That's what I want to know. Where's an officer? What was the idea anyway? I guess I... I didn't know what I was doing. You see, he's a kid I grew up with. You better decide what side of the law you're on. Fourteen on three twelve. That store at seven nineteen Harley Street was held up by Jip Hoyle, uh, one of Benny Dean's mob. Yep. Yeah. About 30, medium height, light gray tweed suit. Usually hangs around Mellon's pool hall. Okay, Sergeant. I'll make a report on it and call you. Thanks, Davis. Oh, let's forget it. Well, we gotta get the dope on that stick up. I, uh, I just banged up my hand. Do you mind taking a look at it? Not at all. Come this way. I thought maybe I'd broken a bone. All right, Frank, I'll be right over. Dr. Sibbins, you better look after Mr. Neal. He thinks he's broken a bone. I guess maybe it's just a scratch. Oh, you just skinned up a bit. Miss Prentice can take care of you. I'm going to change and go out to lunch. Very well, Doctor. You should be more careful about what you run into. Well, this time it wasn't anybody's head. I judge it was a brick wall. Something like that. Just what was the idea? Well, I had to see you again. You certainly resort to extreme measures. Hello, is Benny there? Let me talk with him. All right, all the while. Hey, Benny, it's Jip. Say, I'd like to wring your neck. Didn't I tell you to lay off that penny ante stuff? Sure, they've been here and over to your house. How about Saturday? Are you all set? Yeah. Keep away from the hideout. Neil's sure to look for you there. Okay, we'll pick you up about two. Of course, a fighter makes a lot of dough for a few years, but then he's all through. While in the department, the guy's got a future. That's right. Someday you may be a sergeant. Say, before I'm through, I'll be commissioner, like old pain in the face. What's the matter with the chief's job? Uh-oh. Speaking about jobs, I better get back to mine. I'm only supposed to take an hour. I don't see why you have to work on my day off. <laughs> Very inconsiderate of me, I know. 
Uh. Oh, say, by the way, I've been transferred to car 15. Is it a promotion? No, I'm afraid not. Davis has got a break in a rookie. Oh. What's the score? 82 cents, please. Thank you. Did he get you? Yeah. Why didn't those saps frisk him? Too big a hurry, I guess. Hey, officer, a guy just hijacked my truck at night, Nathan Grand. Nathan Grand, huh? All right. Step on it, will you? You want to get picked up for speeding? No. I want to get this shoulder fixed. I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. Calling cars 14 and 15. It's Davis. Special attention cars 14 and 15. Truck stolen by four men in black sedan. Two now in truck, two in sedan. That is all. Sounds like Benny's gang. I knew that mob couldn't shoot straight. Wait a minute. Say, I need a doctor. Sure, but doctors have a nasty way of reporting gunshot wounds. I'll fix you up. Say, if you think I'm going to sit here and play the Dutch, you're crazy. Go on, get Doc Simmons. What's the matter with you, Benny? Are you off your nut? He reported. He won't get a chance to. Go on, beat it. All right, you're the boss. Hey, Jip, you better go look after Benny. I got to get a doctor. Sure. Come on, Bill, give us a hand. Yeah. Here. Maybe we found a lead. But there was only one man in that sedan. Yeah, but there's something funny about it coming out of that alley. Everything's supposed to be closed in this district on Saturday afternoon. We'd better look around. Pull up. Stick him up! 
tough guy. Get up! All right, copper, up on your feet. Get up with it. Take him over there, Pete. Quick, get his gun, Chip. All right, boys, come on, move. Come on, get going. Come on, move. Get in. We've brought you a little present, Benny. What do you want to do with them? Put them in the office where we can keep an eye on them. Come on, get in. Get in. Come on. Get in. I've got to see the doc right away. Oh, he isn't in just now. When do you expect him back? Not for an hour or more. Is there something I can do? Well, I don't know. I've got a friend that's been... Uh, well, he's been in an accident and he's in pretty bad shape. Can't you bring him here? No. We're afraid to move him. He's bleeding pretty bad. Well, perhaps I'd better see what I can do. Yeah, I wish you would. Wait a minute while I gather up a few things. Calling car 15. Calling car 15. Our master's voice. Go to 14's district. Investigate car 14. Has not reported. That is all. Davison, the rookie must have gotten in a jam. I suppose Benny figured with me out of the district he could get away with anything, the dirty rat. Let's go. He's in bad shape. Well, Benny, here you are. I thought I told you to bring the doc. He wasn't in. And this lady said she could fix you up. Let me see. When you get through with me, you can take care of another patient in there. Well, what a clinic you have here. Davis and his buddy must have spotted the truck and trailed it here. Why here? Well, this is where Benny and his gang hang out. Okay, let's find out. Wait a minute. The mob knows me. If I go in there alone, I may be able to bring Davis and that other guy out. That is, if they're still alive. What are you going to use, hypnotism? No, another kind of an act. It's worth trying anyway. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. So do I. It's you. Listen, I gotta see Benny right away. What about? I gotta tip him off about something. He's in a jam. Okay. Wait here. Bob's outside, Benny. Says he's gotta see you about something important. Alone? Yeah. Maybe it's a stall. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Bring him in. Okay. Ain't you taking a chance, Benny? So is he. If he's trying to cross us, we'll have him right here where we can take care of him. Did that cook force you to come here? No. Like the bright girl I am, I offered to come. Hello, boys. What's the idea? Throw a little party? What do you want? Well, I'll tell you. I've decided to declare myself in on this little hall. What hall? Don't pull that on me. They've been broadcasting the license number of that truck. How do you figure you weigh a cut? 
Haven't you heard that crack about silence being golden? I get it. The good old shakedown. Well, it'll be too bad if headquarters found out about this hideout. Okay, honest copper. When we collect on the stuff, you'll get yours. That's fair enough. You know, a copper's salary doesn't go very far. Say, you can't hold them long without stirring up a hornet's nest. When the time comes, they'll find them. Not so good. You're playing with dynamite. I know it, but we gotta keep them from shooting off their mouths. I have a hunch they might get locked, Joe. Or a little cut. You're sure generous with our dough. You're getting plenty out of this job. You don't want to have to spend it on lawyers, please, do you? All right, see what you can do with them. Wait a minute. Hand over that cat. I'll just make sure you don't try and get away with anything. You wouldn't trust your own grandmother, would you? Not if she was a cop. You cheap double-crossing crook. Now listen, I want to talk to you. Now, I've already heard what you have to say. Some more of your playmates, huh? Don't judge us by yourself. You better let me handle this. That's great. Keep calling me out. Keep talking. That's fine. I thought you'd be sensible. Hey, Benny. It's all right. This copper tried to hold out for a bigger cut, but I talked him out of it. Can I have my rod back? Sure, why not? Stick him up. Come on, stick him up. Don't let me say it again. Don't worry, it won't be necessary. Make sure your gets loaded before you pull a stunt like that again. All right, Benny. I guess you win. around the building. The rest of you come with me. You here, Carter? Blow it open. You boys have everything under control. Take them out to the car. Come on, get moving. All right, come on. Come on, move. All right, come on, get out of there. Come on. Yeah. Looks like you won't get your cut after all, copper. It'll kind of cramp your style having to live on your policeman's pay. 
What do you mean? Just the usual squeal from a rat when he's trapped. Don't you see? Bob pretended to be on their side to save us. You mustn't believe what that crook said. I'd rather believe you. Well, I'll give you a full report, Captain. You look as if you need some repairs. You certainly do. Here, let me. I'm an expert at tying neckties. Well, that's fine. You're hired. Say, how did you get all this experience? 